Hello all, so here we are continuing the fifth unit or the first unit of uh, second year EBS second part okay with this video lecture we'll be completing this unit nuclear accidents and nuclear holocaust the nuclear energy was discovered by human as an alternative clean and cheap source of energy in the short history of nuclear energy there have been accidents that have surpassed any natural calamity or other energy source extraction in their impacts a single nuclear accident can cause loss of life, loss of property, long-term illness, destruction of property on a large scale for a longer period of time. Due to the combustion of wood, plastics, petroleum, forest, large quantity of black soot will be carried to the stratosphere. The black soot absorbs solar radiation and won't allow the radiation to reach the earth and the evaporation will also reduce. Therefore, a cooling atmosphere creates into the environment. This is not this is known as nuclear winter this will be important in mcqs and all what is nuclear winter okay now this it's very important now the case study the atomic boom no, the hiroshima and nagasaki attack in the second world war just refer to that also then environmental legislation india is the first country in the world to have made provision for the protection and conservation of environment in its constitution okay first country after UN Conference on Human Environment in Stockholm uh, in 1972, every year 5th June is celebrated all over the world as World Environment Day. Soon after the Stockholm Conference, our country took substant uh, substantive legislative steps for environment protection. Wildlife Protection Act 1972, Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, Forest Conservation Act 1980, Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981, uh, then Environment Protection Act 1986. The Constitutional Provisions and Environment, so Article 21, Right to Pollution uh, Free Environment, Article 48A, the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country. Article 51 AG, duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forest, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. Next, environmental legislations. So, general, forest and wildlife, water, air. Environmental laws in India. Um, there are 22. So, you can study four or five among them or eight among them uh, there won't be any question asking like write the 22 environmental what to say the laws in India okay so you can try to select and study some of them uh, so the first one the water act 1974 then water rules 1975 then water cess act 1977 then uh, water cess rules 1978 the air act 1981 the air rules 1982 the environment act 1986 the environment rules 1986 hazardous rules 1989 manufacture storage and import of hazardous chemical rules 1989 the forest act 1980 the forest rules 1981 then the wildlife protection act 1972 the wildlife rules uh, for transactions and taxonomy 1973 uh, the wildlife central rules 1973 then wildlife licensing master matters uh, sorry the wildlife licensing rules 1983 uh, one minute then uh, the wildlife rules 1995 then the wildlife rules this was specified to plans okay it is in 1995 again the public liability insurance act 1991 the, the public liability insurance rules 1991 the national environmental tribunal act 1995 the national environmental appellate authority act 1997 so these are explaining them not them but some other also so in general the 1986 environment uh, Protection Act authorizes the central government to protect and improve environmental quality, control and reduce pollution from all sources and prohibit or restrict the setting or operation of any industrial facility on governmental, sorry, on environmental grounds. The 1989 objective of hazardous waste 
rules is to control the general collection, treatment, import, storage and handling of Asara's waste. 1998 Biomedical uh, Waste Rules is a legal binding on the healthcare institutions to streamline the process of proper handling of hospital waste such as segregation, dispersal, collection and treatment. The 2000 Municipal Solid Waste Rules apply to every municipal authority responsible for the collection, uh, segregation, storage, transportation, processing and disposal of municipal solid waste. The 2002 Noise Pollution Rules um, lay down such terms and uh, conditions as are necessary to reduce noise pollution, permit use of loudspeakers or public address systems during night hours uh, between 10 to 12 on during any cultural or religious festive occasion. Next is forest and wildlife. Uh, wildlife. The 1927, the Indian Forest and Amendment uh, 1984 is one of the many surviving colonial statues. It was enacted to consolidate the law re related to uh, forest and transit of forest produce and the duty levyable uh, on timber and other forest produce. 1972, the Wildlife Protection Act rules 1973 and Amendment 1991 uh, provides for protection of birds and animals and for all matters that are connected to it, whether it be their habitats or the waterhole or the forest and sustain them. I'll, I'll continue in a second. Give me. Okay. Yeah, I've been for some water. Okay, so 1980, the Forest Act and Rules, uh, Rules is in 1981, okay. So, provides for the protection of and conservation of forest. Then, 2002, the Biological Diversity Act is an act to provide for the conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of its components and fair and equitable sharing of the uh, benefits arising out of the use of biological resources and knowledge associated with it. Next is water. The 1974 the Water Act establishes the institutional structure for preventing and abating water pollution. It establishes standards for water quality and effluent. Polluting industries must seek permission to discharge of waste into effluent bodies. The Central Pollution Control Board was constituted under this Act. 1977, the Water Cess Act provides for the levy and collection of cess or fees on water consuming industries and local authorities. 1978, the Water Cess Rules contains uh, the standards, definitions, and indicate the kind of an allocation of meters and that every consumer of water is required to affix. 1991, the Coastal uh, Regulation Zone Notification puts regulations on various activities, including construction, are regu regulated. It gives some protection to the backwaters and estuaries. Uh, then, Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. It provides for maintaining and uh, restoring the wholesomeness of water by preventing and controlling its uh, pollution. Pollution here is the contamination of water or alteration of the physical, chemical or biological properties of water or such discharge as is likely to cause a nuisance or render the water harmful or injurious to uh, public health and safety or harmful for any other use or to aquatic plants and other organisms or animal life. The above definition of water pollution covers all types of probable agents in, uh, and life being affected in any way. The salient features and provisions of the Act. It provides the maintenance and restoration of quality of all types of surface and 
uh, groundwater. It provides the establishment of central and state boards of pollution control CPCB and SPCB. It confers them with powers and functions to control pollution. Uh, they widely represent and give comprehensive powers to advise, coordinate and provide technical assistance for prevention and control of pollution act. The act has provisions for fund, budget, accounts and audit of the central and state pollution control boards. The act makes provision for various penalties for the defaulters and procedure for the same. Functions like every SPCB have similar functions at the state level and are governed by directions of CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board. Uh, the board advises the state government with respect to the location of any industry that might pollute a stream or a well. It lays down standards for effluents and is employed to take samples from any stream, well or trade effluent or sewage passing through an industry. The state board is empowered to take legal samples of trade effluent in accordance with the procedure laid down in the act. The board suggests efficient methods for utilization, treatment and disposal of trade effluents. Air Act 1981 In 1981, the government passed the act to clean our air by controlling the pollution, sources, uh, industries, vehicles, power plants, etc. The sources of air pollution, okay? So, in the first year, the fourth unit was on pollution itself, right? So, it is not permitted to release particulate matter, lead, carbon, monoxide, sulfur dioxide, VOC or uh, other toxic substances beyond a prescribed limit. The measurement of pollution level is being ensured by government-led pollution control boards. Now, the salient features of this act. This act provides for prevention, control and abatement of air pollution. In the act, air pollution has been defined as the presence of any solid liquid gaseous substance, including noise, in the atmosphere in such concentration as may or tend to be harmful to human beings or any other living creatures or plants or property or environment. Noise pollution has been inserted as pollution in the act in 1987. The Pollution Control Board at the central or state level have the regulatory authority to implement the Air Act. Under Section 17, the board have authority to check the whether or not the um, like industry strictly follows the forms or standards laid down by board. Under Section 19, the consultation with the State Pollution Control Board, the state, con state government may declare an area with, within the state as air pollution control area and can prohibit the use of any fuel other than approved fuel in the area causing air pollution. Section 20 of the Act has provision for ensuring emission standards from automobiles. Penalties the authority of industry are to be penalized if they produce the emission of air pollutants in excess of the standards laid down by the state boards. Whoever, um, what to say, contravents any of the provision of the act or any order or directions issued is punishable with imprisonment of for a term which may extend to three months or with a fine of rupees 10,000 or with both. In case of continuing offence with an additional fine which may extend to rupees 5000 for every day. Environment Protection Act 1986 The environment includes water, air and land and the interrelationship which exists among and between water, air and land and human beings, other living creatures, plants, microorganisms and property. Environmental pollutant means any solid, liquid or gaseous substance present in such concentration as may be or tend to be injurious to environment. Environmental pollution means the presence in the environment of any environmental pollutant. So, Environment Prote uh, Protection Act 1986. So, handling in relation to any substance means the manufacture, process, treatment, uh, package, and storage, uh, transportation, use, collection, uh, destruction, conversion, offering for sale, transfer, or the like of such substance. Hazardous substance means any substance or pre uh, preparation which, by reason of its chemical or physiochemical properties of um, handling, is liable to cause harm to human beings, other living creatures, plant, microorganism, property, or the environment. Occupier in relation to any factor or premises means a person who has control over the affairs of the factory or the premises and includes in relation to any substance uh, the person in possession of the substances. 
Next is requirement of Environment Protection Act. I know that I'm going a little bit in a hurry, but actually there is nothing more to explain there. These are simply to read out. You need to note down and you need to by heart or study. So that's the sole reason why I'm going in hurry. So the requirement under EPA. Section 7. No person carrying on any industry operation or process shall discharge or emit or permit to be discharged or emitted any environmental pollutant in excess, in excess of such standards as may be prescribed. Section 8. No person shall handle or cause to be, de uh, cause to be handled any hazardous substance except in accordance with such procedures and after complying with such safeguards as may be prescribed. Penalties. Whoever fails to comply with or contravances uh, any of the provisions of this act shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may be extended to five years with fine, which may be extended to one lakh rupees or with both. In case the failure or contravention continues uh, with additional fine, which may extend to five thousand rupees for every day during which such failure or contravention continues after the conviction for the first such failure or contravention. If the failure or contravention referred to above continues beyond a period of one year after the date of conviction, uh, the offender shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to seven years. Now, public environmental awareness. Some of the main reasons res responsible for widespread environmental ignorance can be summed up as follows. Our coast um, have so failed to integrate the knowledge in environmental aspect as an essential component of the curriculum. Our planners, decision makers, politicians, bureaucrats, administrators have not been well trained so as to consider the environmental aspects associated with their plans. The developmental project must lead with the information of environmental aspects. There is greater consideration of economic gains and issues related to eliminating poverty by providing employment that overshadow the basic environmental issues. Now, methods to propagate environmental awareness. Various stages and methods that can be useful for raising environmental awareness in different sections of the society are follows. Among students, among masses, uh, among planners, through education, mass media, uh, respectively. Now, role of NGOs. Voluntarily, organizations can help by advising the government about some local environmental issues and at the same time interacting with grassroots levels. They can act both as an action group or a pressure group. The Chipko movement for conservation of trees by Dasholi Gram Swarajya Mandal in Gobeshwa, Narmada Bachavo Antolan, organized by Kalpavriksh. Uh, Bombay Natural History Society, the World Wide Fund for Natural India, Center for Science and Environment and many others are playing their important role for environment conservation. Uh, the UNCED 1992, we know Earth Summit, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, second meeting of uh, world leader discussing environment, 150 head of states. Outcomes of UNCED? United uh, Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to reduce the threat of global warming, then Convention on Bio Biological Diversity to preserve biodiversity, then Rio Declaration include 27 principles to guide uh, development and environment, the forest principle to emphasize right of state and ev advocating for sustainable forest management, adopted Agenda 21 action plan to introduce sustainable development commission on sustainable development monitor and report uh, on implementation of sustainable development next is unfccc united nations framework on climate convention climate okay so unfcc um entered uh, into force on 21st march 1994 that is, United Nations Framework uh, Convention on Climate Change came into existence on 1994. Today, it has 
nearly universal membership. The 197 countries that have ratified the convention are called parties of the convention. Uh, they recognized there as a problem. The ultimate objective on the convention is to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system. It states that such a level um, should be achieved within a time frame sufficient to allow ecosystems to adapt naturally to climate change to ensure that food production is not threatened and to enable economic development to proceed in a sustainable manner. International cooperation, fund and science technology sharing, government, uh, sorry, global environmental facility. Next is Kyoto Protocol. So, industrialized countries to cut emissions to 5% below 1990 levels by 2008. Then, varying targets, European Union by 8% and Japan by 5% because they are uh, low polluters. Japan, okay. Then, countries like Ireland were allowed to increase emissions. Then, Paris Climate Agreement. So, the historical document that legally binds the whole world to participate in the climate change fight okay the aspects here were the goal was holding the increase in global average temperature well below 200 degrees celsius and pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase in 1.5 degrees celsius uh, 196 countries adopted the agreement officially recognizing human influence on climate uh, it signed in 2020, it was fine, signed by 55 countries, which were covering 55% of global emissions. Uh, by 2050, the balance between emissions and sinks should be reached in the second half of 2021 century. Then clean technologies, the agreement urges to spend uh, up clean tech development and international technology transfer because the global south and global north divide. Okay. Then the agreement binds saving and increasing forest area in order to capture greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. We studied how the forest area captures the greenhouse gas okay, in the last units. Then for the first time ever, the agreement defines climate loss and damage terms, but liability and compensation are not mentioned. Then every five year countries shall revise their emissions reduction targets and measures. Rich countries will provide minimum of $100 billion to developing, developing ones for climate change adaption. Let's see, will it happen or not? Okay. Next is uh, Paris Climate Agreement Key Points. You can refer to this, okay? Burden sharing, review mechanism, climate damage. These are the three things. So the temperature, well below 2 degrees Celsius, then finance. We discussed all these now. Differentiation developed countries must continue to take the lead that is then emissions objectives okay not them six six points have to be noted temperature five, no uh, not six seven points temperature finance differentiation em uh, emission objective burden sharing a review mechanism climate change uh, climate damage so anything on paris uh, climate agreement these seven key points have to be noted and a short note on paris uh, agreement next is the convention on international trade in endangered species of uh, wild fauna and flora sites okay the full form I mean you may be asked to write the full form of such terminologies okay so this aims uh, to ensure that international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival Okay, in last exam, uh, there were for four marks, I guess, uh, no, eight words, eight short forms were abbreviations. Eight abbreviations were provided. Uh, we needed to answer them in full forms. So it was four or five marks, I guess. So the abbreviations are really important. Okay. Okay, again to sites. Sites works by subjecting international trade in uh, specific specimens of selected species to control 
to certain controls. All import, export, re-export and introduction from the sea of species covered by the convention has to be authorized through a licensing system. Each party to the convention must designate one or more management authorities in charge of administering that licensing system and uh, one or more scientific authorities to advise them on effects of trade on the status of the species. Uh, the, speci the species covered, sorry, the species covered by sites are listed in three appendices according to the degree of protection they need. Appendix, uh, appendix 1 includes species threatened with extinction. Trade in specimens of these species is permitted only in exceptional circumstances. A appendix 2 includes species not necessarily threatened uh, with extinction but in which trade must be controlled in order to avoid utilization incompatible with their survival. Then third appendix contains species that are protected in at least one country which has asked other sites parties for assistance in controlling the trade. You can note down these pictures, I mean the diagrams. Okay, next is uh, Convention Biological Diversity. CBD, UN CBD, okay. The convention was opened for signature on 5th June 1992 at the UN Conference on Environment and Development, Rio Earth Summit, okay. The convention entered into force in 29th uh, December 1993, which was 90 days after the 30th ratification. Strategic plan for biodiversity, including the IG biodiversity targets for the 2011-2020 period was in here. Next is Ramsar Convention. It was for uh, wetlands, adopted on 2nd February 1971, first of the modern intergovernmental and environmental, environmental agreements. Mission, the conservation and wise use of wetlands through national actions, international cooperation as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development. Three pillars, wise use, designation of priority wetlands, then international cooperation for shared wetlands and their resources like transboundary sites and all wise use matlab um, the ramsar convention has many practical guidelines and um, cop resolutions that co cope resolutions on the conservation and wise use of wetlands okay so uh, then well known uh, well known what to say independent scientific and technical panel produce handbooks and guidelines then member of the Ramsar family have significant experience in the conservation and management of wetlands particularly for forest wetlands large program on communication education public awareness and training and world wetlands day 2010 oh, wetland forest okay that is referred to some of the wetlands Ashtamudi wetland in Kerala Okay, you can study some five or six of them. Okay, if asked as an example, you can write. Then Bidar Ganiga, Mangrove and Orissa, Boj Wetland, Madhya Pradesh, Chandra Dal, Himachal Pradesh, Chilika Lake, Orissa, Dhiborbil, Azam, East Calcutta Wetland, West Bengal, Harige Wetland, Punjab, Hokirsar Wetland, Jammu and Kashmir, Kanchli Wetland, Punjab, Kualadio National Park, Rajasthan, Kuleru Lake, Andhra Pradesh, Loktak Lake, Manipur. Uh, Nal Sarovar Bird, Bird Sanctuary, Gujarat, Point, Kalimar Wetlife and Bird Sanctuary, Tamil Nadu, Pongdam Lake, Himachal Pradesh, Renuga Wetland, Himachal Pradesh, Robar, Punjab, Rudrasagar, Tribura, Tri Rudrasagar Lake, okay. Zambar Lake, Rajasthan, Shastam Kota Lake, Kerala, Surinsar, Manzar Lake, Jammu and Kashmir, Trishur Gol Wetland, Kerala, uh, Zomididi, Jammu and Kashmir, Upper Ganga River, UP, uh, Bambanad Coal Wetland, Kerala, Bular Lake, JNK. So, next is National Action Plan on Climate Change. National Solar Mission, National Mission on Enhanced Energy Efficiency, National uh, Mission on Sustainable Habitat, National Water Mission, National Mission on uh, for Sustainable Agriculture, National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change, National Mission for sustainable 
sorry sustaining the himalayan ecosystem national mission for green india these are the plans for that we have adopted now for the as an action plan for climate change national action Pl plan for climate change it was released on 30th june 2008 india is the first country to release such a plan this initiative describes india's effort to combat the impacts of climate change vision is to create prosperous but not wasteful society and economy that is self sustaining so first we had uh, Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission to establish India as a global leader in solar energy. Okay, the achievements, key achievements um, are listed here. I'm not reading all them out. You can note them by yourself. Um, okay, this may or may not be asked. There is a scope for a question from this part anyway. Okay. So one is National Nehru Jawaharlal. Sorry, Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission, then National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency to achieve growth with ecological sustainability by devising cost-effective energy efficient strategies, then National Water Mission, um, then so that the National Water Mission was to conserve water, minimize wastage, and ensure equal distribution both across and within states through integrated water resources development. the national mission for sustainable agriculture to transform agriculture into an ecologically sustainable climate resilient production production system and ensuring uh, food security then national mission on sustainable habitat to promote sustainability of habitats by improving energy efficiency in urban planning the budget associated with it key achievements everything have to be noted okay then national mission for sustainable sorry sustaining the himalayan ecosystem to safeguard the himalayas and attempt to address impacts of climate change on himalayan glaciers biodiversity and wildlife conservation the national mission for a green india to grow and maintain sustainably managed forest and other ecosystem the national mission on strategic knowledge for climate change to identify challenges and responses to climate change through research technology development and show funding of high quality and focused research next is a new one this may be new to most of you chemical weapon convention 1997 This convention aims to eliminate an entire category of weapons of mass destruction by prohibiting the development, production, acquisition, stockpiling, retention, transfer or use of chemical weapons by state parties. State parties have also agreed to create a verification regime for certain toxic chemicals and their precursors um, in order to ensure that such chemicals are only used for purposes not prohibited under convention. A unique feature of the convention is its incorporation of the challenge inspection board by and state any state party in doubt about another state party's compliance can request a surprise inspection. Okay so that's that's it. So save water, save energy, save the environment. If you want to act green, first think green. We are done with the fifth unit. Then, in the next video lecture, we can start with the sixth unit. So, thank you. Happy learning.